In this lesson, we're going to talk about denial of service attacks or DOS attacks. A denial of service attack occurs when a computer is used to flood a server with more packets than it can handle. Once a server is overloaded, the server becomes unavailable to other users and devices that try to connect to it. DOS attacks use a single computer with a single connection to attack a single target. The attacker uses some sneaky method to send a large number of legitimate looking requests to the server to make sure it can't determine which requests are valid and which aren't. This barrage of requests overwhelms the system to the point that the server can't manage the capacity, making it inaccessible to other users. Another form of a DOS attack is a Distributed Denial of Service Attack, or DDoS attack. A DDoS uses numerous computers and internet connections across the world to overload the target systems. DDoS attacks are usually executed through a network of devices that the attacker has gained control of. The attacker uses compromised websites and emails to distribute specially designed malware to poorly secured devices. This malware provides an access point to the attacker, which they can use to control the device. These zombie devices are recruited to cooperative teams called botnets. The attacker's goal is to recruit as many zombie machines as possible, often creating botnets of thousands of computers. When an attacker is ready to strike, he commands his army of machines to launch a coordinated attack at a target system. And with the advancement of the Internet of Things, it is important to note that zombie devices aren't limited to desktops and laptops. Any device that can communicate over the Internet can be hacked. This includes security cameras, DVR players, and even kitchen appliances. One of the most infamous DDoS attacks targeted DIN, a cloud-based Internet performance management organization that provides DNS services to sites like Amazon, Twitter, and PayPal. In 2016, an attack was made using an army of security cameras, DVRs, and network printers. The attack topped out at 1.2 terabits per second, creating connectivity issues across the United States. DOS and DDoS attacks can do a lot of damage to the victims. Many companies rely heavily, if not solely, on their web presence to operate their businesses. A targeted DOS attack will often result in slowed access, if not complete downtime, for the victim's web servers. Behind the scenes, a DOS attack can take down servers, databases, or other infrastructure critical to daily operations. But for a business, the most painful impact can be the loss of revenue and decreased customer satisfaction. Depending on the company's size, a DOS attack could result in lost customers and thousands, if not millions, of dollars in lost revenue. DOS and DDoS attacks don't provide the attacker with access to a resource. Instead, they prevent an authorized user from obtaining access to information or services. So, if the attacker doesn't get access to the network, why would they even bother with a denial of service attack? One reason may be to simply create a distraction. If the network team is distracted by a denial of service attack, that might create an opportunity for an attacker to infiltrate the network, download sensitive data, or cause damage without being noticed right away. An attacker may want to embarrass the victim to get revenge or make a competitor look bad. This happened in 2013, when a company named CyberBunker was blacklisted by SpamHoss, an anti-spam organization. Shortly after, a CyberBunker employee targeted SpamHoss with a DDoS attack that was large enough to disable part of their email service and cause their website to fall offline. In 2018, a man in New Mexico was sentenced to 15 years in prison after spending two years launching DDoS attacks on former employers, business competitors, and companies that had chosen not to hire him. DDoS attacks are also commonly used by politically or morally driven hacktivists who want to stop the flow of information from a target website. WikiLeaks has been the target of numerous DDoS attacks over the years. These attacks have impacted the flow of information from the site for days, if not weeks, at a time. In 2018, a group of activists that called themselves Anonymous Catalonia targeted the Spanish Central Bank with two straight days of attacks as a protest against recent arrests. Other anonymous groups have been responsible for other significant DDoS attacks on various targets across the globe. But sometimes an attacker's motive isn't very complicated. Sometimes attackers do what they do just for fun. 
Two 20-somethings created a system that would give them an edge while playing Minecraft. Their software was so successful that they decided that they could make some extra cash by selling the service to other players. As it turned out, there was a market of players who wanted to kick their competitors offline. The creators of this botnet had no idea that they were going to create one of the most notorious denial-of-service botnets, Mirai. This isn't the only time DDoS attacks were used to make a profit. As a matter of fact, attackers frequently try to exploit their victims for money. Their goal is basically to hold a network or web server hostage. Once the denial-of-service attack is successfully implemented, the attackers request a ransom to make them stop it. Speaking of profit, DDoS services and botnets are even available to rent at an hourly or daily rate. Remember that guy in New Mexico who was getting revenge on his employers? He actually used several DDoS for hire services to aid his efforts. That's it for this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about what denial of service attacks are, what type of impact they can have, and why attackers choose to use this method.